here's where I come at all of this. And I'm, I'm gonna sort of give you this framework. And the reason I was sort of shaking my book at you at the beginning is not because I wrote a book, but because the work that I do is about, honestly, it's about community communication. I do community development work. It's about reinvesting in communities, my background's in city planning, but the way I do it is purely young Shudia. I, I work with communities to create more opportunity for more people. It's completely based, in, I have my own small business, but it's completely based in Tikkun Olan, so social impact kind of work, specifically around local small business owners and bringing downtowns back to life. But the, the basis of my work, from my perspective, is all based in young Judea values. Tikkun Olam, how are you contributing to the world? The dignity of people, sort of people in the most general term, right? And a belief in peace, right? And, and that people deserve a dignity in the Middle East and anywhere else in the world to live at peace and to, to be able to pursue their livelihoods. And that part of my, my sort of implementation of that is, is running around the country and telling everybody that everyone deserves to live in a place that's safe and that feels loved. That's the way it expresses through my work. And I do it having to do with economic development and planning and all sorts of stuff. We're not going to talk about that part. But the, the thing that came out to me when I wrote my book was that I started realizing that there was a really specific set of steps that communities needed to go through to do this. And it had nothing to do with technical. And when I talk about technical having to community, you can apply the exact same thing to like peace in the Middle East or Zionism. It has nothing to do with technical or like 10%, 20% had to do with technical. It was mostly about who we talk to and the conversations that we have or the conversations we have. And when I was invited to do this and I was thinking about Mel, who was my, um, I have a long, I've known Mel almost my entire life because my mother was the, the nurse at TY um, when I was two. Um, and so I grew up with Mel and Yaffa over the summers for five summers. Um, and they were like extended parents to me. And I, we literally have a cake in our family called Yaffa's chocolate cake, right? Cause my mother got the recipe from her. So, and, and then Mel was my Marrakez for Elohim. Um, and, and so, you know, every time we went to Israel while I was growing up, um, this was a part of it. Um, and when Mel and Yaffa finally moved to Israel, sort of my family was, went to visit them. There's a whole long history. Anyway, the thing that it made me think about is, and this isn't, I think there was, there's definitely a part of Young Judea that was like, here is the history and the lore, period. <laughs> and we all learned that it was a lot more complicated than that. But the other thing I felt like I learned was that Sichot were about conversation. It was about sitting down and having a conversation where you didn't know all the answers, you were open to listening and learning. And in many cases, we ended up having a difficult conversations. Some people might have been uncomfortable, but it was about the belief in the sikha, in the conversation that we were having. And that I don't know, honestly, if Young Shudi and TY have it the same way that we used to. I get a sense that it's not necessarily the same sort of ability to have that open conversation. And, and I do believe that learning how to have difficult conversations is actually a vital skill that we need to be teaching our youth and ourselves um, in, in all of this work. So my, the basis of my work in this country, in the US, which is where I am based, is really looking at people and places who've historically been excluded or denied opportunity. Often that's going to be the black community or the Latino community, um, indigenous immigrants, right? People who have been excluded or denied opportunity and how are we helping them particularly in terms of creating small businesses. To me, this translates to thinking, my thinking and beliefs around Young Judea and Zionism. And I don't see a tension between being a Zionist and believing in Palestinian rights. I believe in peace, which to me, me means I believe in Palestinian independence, right? Which means a two-state solution. That's my, my personal belief system. And I see absolutely no tension for myself, at least, in all of those pieces that I want Israel to live at peace. I wanna be able to go to Israel and not all be about tragedy, right? I love going to Israel and just talking about the food when I get to go visit, right? And that part of my belief as a Zionist is believing in the need for peace, the, the, the essential need for peace, and that that part of that is believing in Palestinian rights. And so the way we do that to me, when we're looking at Yom Judea, 
We're looking at our role in our communities. We're looking at Israel and what it's doing or not doing that we like or don't like, right? It's about building trust again. It's about how do we have open conversations about the hard stuff, but also what are we doing to contribute to the people who are suffering? And so one of the things that I would love to see Young Judea take on, in fact, in honor of Mel and, and, and this belief is what is the role of Young Judea to support Palestinian rights as a step towards peace? as a step as a Zionist to hold these two truths at the same time. And that I believe we are all smart enough, sort of brain enough to hold two truths at the same time, right? We, we hold multiple truths at the same time in our hand anyway, right? We, for people who live in the United States, you, you maintained your US citizenship, um, no matter what administration was in charge. Those are holding two truths you can know that there is a atrocity, atrocity, there's the bad stuff in the Ukraine, there's a war in the Ukraine, and um, there's a huge amount of racism going on in the evacuation of people. We can hold those truths in our minds at the same time. To me, my Zionism is no different. I love Israel with all of my heart. I can disagree with the government, I can believe in Palestinian rights, and I can still believe in Israel as a place, my birthplace, right, as a place to go. So. I guess my big question is, and, and this is where I want to open up the conversation, is sort of why can't we do this? What's holding us back as Judeans, as, as, as where the, the movement is today and where it's going? Um, and sort of why can't Young Judea be an organization that positions itself as a Zionist organization that believes in peace, which I think it does, but that that means that we need to in fact contribute to Palestinian rights and their independence for the sake of our Zionism and our young Judea values. So that's my big challenge to all of you. I know, I sort of threw a really big one out there, um, but I'd love to, um, you know, sort of if you want to give me a wave or, uh, or a mute, if, if you want to weigh in on, um, you know, sort of A, you're welcome to say like, you agree or disagree, right? You're welcome to. And B, you know, what do you think we can do about it? Mike, you toss your, your digital hand up fast and then we'll go to a lane. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, thanks. Um, no, I appreciate that framing very much. And I think it's something that um, coming from a, a, a recognition that it's okay to say things that are critical of Israel and also care about Israel is something that a lot of people who are who see their commitment to Israel first have trouble with. I, I moved to Phoenix a few months ago. I was connected with someone at the Jewish Federation here. I was having a conversation with her. She was thinking about where she might connect me. And based on things I said in the conversation, she then paused and said, well, I'm trying to think who I could connect you with. Is it fair to say that you are more pro-Palestinian rights? And then she just stopped. And I'm, and I, if I were quicker, I would have said, oh, are you anti-Palestinian rights? Which I don't think she would have said yes to, but this idea that you can only be one, that in order to care about Palestinians, you need to therefore give Israel no space, no, no room for existence. And that there's a lot of room, I think, for young Judea and for all of us to make that space, to recognize what we're saying, to, to say, you, like, you, you, it doesn't have to be a dichotomy. And yeah. to talk openly and honestly, and as someone who's worked as an educator at TY and Hebrew schools, I, I know that kids younger than, than teenagers, you're able to tell them complex things and they can hold those two complex things at the same time. Absolutely. And maybe yeah. there's a change of a narrative. I, I staffed birth rate a bunch of years ago. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> and I had a sense going in that I was going to find myself defending my stance of being critical for Israel, assuming that I was going to talk to people who had a Jewish education similar to mine. But most of my birth rate boss had almost no formal Jewish education. So they weren't coming at me from like the right. They were coming at me from the, the question that I kept, they kept asking me was, you obviously care a lot. Or why do you, if you're so critical of Israel, why do you care? And then right. it gave me a chance to say, it's the one place in the world where I'm not a minority, where the holiday, the, the schedule, the calendar is on my time, where yeah. everyone around me shares that in common with me and therefore I care about it. And by right. calling itself the Jewish state, I want it to live up to the best yeah. values that it possibly could. It's like being in for or against any politician in our country or any action that our that the US does. Elaine, go ahead. And I just, I just want to give people, sorry, Elaine, before you go, um, we only get like 15, 20 minutes. So I want to hear from as many different people as possible. So please go ahead, but just be thoughtful of making sure we all have airtime. Elaine, go ahead. 
Yeah, um, Mike, I mean, the, the whole thing of it being a zero sum game is ridiculous. You know, you can you can love Israel and 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 support uh, Israelis and also support Palestinian rights. And I have personally think in order for Israel to um, to to live securely, they need to do that. Um, and it's a matter of convincing people. So I sort of have a two-pronged approach um, my, through my work with J Street and I do synagogue outreach. So talk about conversations. Um, you know, what we can do in the States, what Americans can do politically um, to try to um, change things in Israel is sort of where J Street's at. And the other thing is to support our um, progressive Israelis progressive Israeli friends on the ground, because there are Israelis who are, um, you know, who do support Palestinian rights and are, and are, are you know, working on the good side. Yeah. Um, and they need our support. You know, I feel like, you know, uh, when I hear from progressive American Jews, and they just turn their back on Israel, it's like, can't deal with it, you know, or, you know, I, I'm not giving them money, or, you know, I hate what they're doing. It's like, right. They're not a monolith, um, right. and we need to stay engaged. Um, it's, it, yeah, it brings up an interesting question to me, and I think this is one or two of you, I'm sorry, I can't remember already who said it, right, is that one of my fears, right, is that unless we can teach, especially our teens and younger kids, that you can hold both of these things, that they're actually going to lose the Zionism, right? They're going to lose the love of Israel, which is still really important to me, right? It is a part of where I grew up. It's part of my history. It's... It's, I mean, you can look at, at the wall hanging behind me, like it is a part of the culture of my house. And that I think it's, it's, it's not only important because it's the right thing to do to support Palestinian rights, to help create peace, but I actually worry about the kids growing up uh, very rightly seeing that there are wrong things going on. Debbie, go ahead. Yeah, hi, um, two things. Number one, I think, I mean, I've been living in Israel much longer already than I lived in the States. So I, I definitely think it's more difficult for people living outside of Israel to be accepted when they are criticizing Israel more than so than the Israelis, because we're here and we have to deal with it and we can vote. Um, and then, you know, the whole BDS thing where you, there's so much pressure, and especially on campuses. And I mean, I rem several, two years ago, we had our 40th Young Judea reunion and we were at Ketura and someone said, I am sad to say that my daughter, who was on a, traveling on a gap year, when she posted pictures of the places that she visited, she didn't post Israel. And when I asked her about it, she said, yeah, but, you know, I didn't want to upset my friends. And so there is a big problem. I think that I feel like in a much less complicated place than maybe you guys do. Because I think here in Israel, those, those of us who are more progressive are involved in volunteering, in um, you know, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, situations which promote um, um, communication and interaction and things like that. And, and, and we always say that that's where peace is gonna be coming from. Right. And you know, um, living with neighbors, learning to speak Arabic um, and, 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 and participating in, in, in the country and trying to show an example. And obviously, Young Judea gave us all that, you know, um, uh, that back, that, 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 that uh, of knowing how to show an example and how to be a leader. Yeah. So I, I actually feel very sad for my, my American, um, you know, peers who I think are in a much harder space than we are here. Yeah, I mean, I, it definitely was easier to criticize when I was there, when I lived there, but I don't, I still don't think that that takes away from being able to hold these two pieces, but I, but I hear you what you're saying, Debbie. Thank you. Steve, go ahead. No, or whichever of you. <laughs> I, I see that. I don't want to put you on the spot, Adam, but because I see that you're on the call, I would just love to hear from you what your experience is and about um, you know, kind of educating around these issues when, when you're running Young Judea programs in Israel, particularly how the year course staff think about um, creating opportunities to have maybe difficult, um, contested conversations with the, with the participants. Again, I apologize to put, for putting you on the spot, but... But you still will. Unity. <laughs> Jennifer, it's fine, absolutely fine. I mean, you guys know 
as some of you on this call knows, and I, Ilana from you know having you have last year, and what we try to do is it's interesting. I was trying to remember because what you you guys were just saying. I remember it was like last year or was it recently? I'm trying, I've forgotten it now when, when um, they, they were also in a similar situation. They wouldn't post something. Some of them had a problem posting something because they were worried about their friends, um, like giving them grief on social media in some support. I can't remember what it was now. It might, it, I actually, it was probably last year's year course, right? Mm -hmm. At the end, remember last year in May when we had this, you know, the, the war situation. I, I remember something now. It's all a bit of a blur with COVID for the last couple of years. But yeah, but look, I, I I don't think it's changed too much since most of our days off here because we're still trying to do what Yanji did. We're trying to be, we're trying to be here. I look, I know there's discussions at TY, a little bit different over to what's going over in the States. But here over in Israel on the, on, on the programs, we're still trying to create as much as a balanced, um, you know, educational uh, ideology that we can try to keep to the young Judea pluralism situation. We try at times. It depends on I me. Mean, look, I mean, you know, who, who think about who your generally who your kids are. You know, who the kids that we have on the program, which definitely influences it. And we, for the last few years, I've seen the majority of obviously the majority of kids, apart from a few Republican Texans, it seems to be that uh, generally we have our uh, rest of everybody are, are your liberal Democrats, uh, which influences. Um, but are we pushing the boundaries at times? I don't know. Um, you know, now with the Mahon program that we're back on the Mahon program of the Kirat Maria, uh, and what they do, oh, that's a whole other discussion about the, where they are and 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 uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure Miran knows about because Sivan now is probably stuff to say about it, right? So we're 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 definitely trying all the time to see are we balancing and are we creating people by the end of the year to be positive Zionists and not without problems saying that they're Zionists. Uh, for the majority of them, I think we're succeeding. These kids are going into university, hopefully very, you know, pro-Israel um, and hopefully seen as many different sides as possible, depending on the courses that they took nowadays on the Mahon. But it's definitely, you know, something we're, we're continuously thinking about. Uh, are we, are we, um, uh, are we, are we showing them all the different sides of it to, to you know, to a degree to what we can show? Um, right. Yeah, it's a struggle. And, and I think it's part of the way there. I mean, that's my feedback about it, right? Just from, from watching, at least from a distance. And obviously last year was partial. And I don't think your course is the only place that has a responsibility to take something like this on from my perspective, right? This is something that, you know, the way we teach Zionism at TY is very different than how it was taught when I was there, right? And, um, you know, and and the opportunity to think about I, you know, I, and I, I think about, I did, so I worked in planning in Israel for a while after college, I lived there, and um, one of the things that I learned that I, at the age of 23, had never understood before that was that, you know, I'd gone on your course, and I'd gone to a development town, and I, I volunteered in, in Arad, and that was, that was an implicit underinvestment in a community because they were Mizrahi Jews, right? And I never understood it from that perspective then. And then I, when I moved back, I had an opportunity to work in planning and I worked in some of the Arab-Israeli um, communities, which are underinvested like um, black majority communities in the US, right? Which have been excluded from opportunity and underinvested in for, for decades for similar reasons, unfortunately, right? And then on top of that, you know, sort of learning over time about um, Palestinian rights and, and all and those pieces. And I don't think you should yet or your course take on any of that, right? And I, I do think that there is, you know, there's interesting conversations about who are we volunteering with? Where are we touring? Whose culture do we get exposed to? Um, you know, how are we not only teaching people to love Israel, which I believe Young Judea does and your course does, but how do we learn to be critical thinkers? I know my kid went into it with that and came out through, of it with that, but but I think that's mostly because of our house. Debbie, go ahead, you had your hand up. Was that a new or is that from before? It was from before, okay, sorry. Um, um, her hand. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody else who hasn't spoken yet in particular wants to add in, you know, where your thoughts are on on where, you know, sort of what do we, um, you know, where, where, would, where do we go with this, I guess, is my question. Is, is there something that we can do with Young Judea or in, in support of, of, you know, kids as they go through Young Judea to really um, figure out how to instill the movement with the values that are the basis of the movement, 
but really follow through in a way that is inclusive of the of the things that we have historically done wrong, right? Um, and, and I think a lot of my work really is about getting to a table, even on Zoom, getting to, on, to a table with people to say, we did things wrong in the past and we need to like say that clearly. We, you know, when I work, I'm doing a project right now with Chester, Pennsylvania. This is a town right next to Philadelphia that has been neglected, beyond neglected for the last bunch of decades and is a black majority community and being able to work with this community and say, not only were you guys excluded in the past, but you were actually had funding pulled. You have um, the major incinerator for the East Coast. Like you have very specific things that were done wrong for you. What do we do now? What do, how do we change things? What do we do better? And how do we create more opportunity for, for that? And, and I think figuring out how to have that conversation in Young Judea and as Zionists is a really interesting opportunity. I think it would just be really interesting. Mike. I'll defer to anybody else if they haven't spoken yet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I, I, I like written this down, I can send it in the chat, but uh, th there's a framing that we need to respond to the critic, to the, the like BDS, strong critics of Israel. The way to respond is by showing a unified front and by saying, uh, and, and that framing like is a little bit demeaning to folks in those camps by, assuming that they're fundamentally wrong for wanting to change the status quo that and, and i don't think that that's what most of us on the left believe but when we take a stance of bds is bad that's that's what we're doing and there is a more nuanced message that we can push as progressive supporters of israel that says we are also critical of israel and these are the ways that we are actively working at changing the status quo at building a palestinian civil society at ending discrimination within the green line fighting a military occupation and these are these are ways that if we're successful in those means, we undermine BDS by making them not have anything that they need to push for, rather right. than by saying they're wrong for wanting to change something. Right. I, I, my shorthand version of that is: if you, if you really believe in peace, if you really believe in a two-state solution, what are you willing to do about it? Right. I mean, at some point you have to say, right? At some point you have to say, yes, this stuff is okay, and yes, this stuff is okay, and will you act on it? And that's where a lot of it breaks down, right? I mean, that's that's the honest conversation where a lot of things break down in this country. I, I think for a lot of the younger uh, people, the notion of a two-state solution, however desirable it might be, seems like a fantasy that's never going to happen and that sort of has failed already. And I think a lot of young people have moved on to like what is the next most workable solution in because of the 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 kind of the death of the two state solution, which which we mourn, but we but many young people I think are, are thinking it's never happening. So stop playing this game that we're working towards a two state solution because we're not. So what can we actually do? And and I know that uh, our daughter who was on your course and who was a Madraha TY, you know, toys with all kinds of ideas in her head about a one state solution, you know, with, with full democratic rights for everybody, which of course means the end of the Jewish state. And and for our daughter who is a Zionist, who I think has, who's grown up in Zionist movement, she says, look, I would much rather have a two state solution and have a democratic Israel and a democratic Palestine. But if Israel is really going to rule the West Bank forever, in a military occupation and deny the rights of these people, I'd rather have a one state solution than that. And just being able to have that conversation, right? And I'm not ready to mourn a two state solution. I'm not giving no, up. But, but I think that's where a lot of the kids are. Right. And I think no, that totally we're understand. still we're living in this sort of policy idea from the 1980s. And a lot of kids have just moved beyond it and said, that's never happening. So stop right. wasting my time pretending that we're doing that. Um, and I think I think I it's why it's very and I, I think at TY it's very difficult to teach these things. By the way, because we've heard from David Weinstein that when he does when when there are programs that offer a Palestinian perspective, he gets complaints from parents. Right. There are parents who hear about it and go crazy, and you know people who are from from uh, youth commissions and who you know who are saying you know who are threatened essentially not who are kind of implicitly threatening him in a sense to not yeah. to not go to that place. So it's a very difficult thing to do in the context of Yen Judea. Yep. No, I, I all of those pieces I hold true, and I do think that there is this really interesting opportunity to. 
educate the parents and educate the kids about, you know, why we need to have open and critical conversations with each other and why we need to be able to have difficult conversations that you as a parent may not agree with. Like, right, if I if the kids came home and, you know, my 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 teen is is gonna be on Gesher this summer, right? Two weeks at TY and three weeks in Israel. And um my my older one will be a, a Madrid at TY this summer. And if one of them, you know, came back afterwards and said, we had the, the most amazing conversation about one state solution and how we get there. There's a part of me that would go, ah, right? But I would love to hear that they would have that conversation. And the fact that people fight back against having open and critical conversations is, and, and threaten funding, right? Because of it is a really, really big issue. So I'm gonna wrap us up. Um, I just wanna be thoughtful about the time and what comes next. Uh, I really appreciate you guys joining me and having this conversation with me. I don't usually get to have this conversation with anybody. So this is um, really interesting for me. And I do, you know, with all my community development work here, I do really sincerely believe that, that there is so much more we can do with these conversations and so much more good that we can create. And, and you know, I just appreciate having this conversation with you guys today and, and, and starting it. So thank you.